beginner's class because these are tools that are important. You know, you need to know how to use them and use them properly. Um, not just um, not just how to browse and all that, because when you want to like start your job um, or your any corporate work, you will be asked to use this tool for a lot of things. So, um, so that's why we thought that it's important to include this um, course in this in this section. Okay, so um, let me share my screen. Okay, please can you see my screen? All right, so you should, if you don't want to unmute your mic, you should be able to raise your hand. I think the raise hand feature should be available for you, whether you're using the mobile or the browser, because I can see it on my browser. So you should just raise your hand or um, put a message in the chat box for it. So can you see my screen, please? I need to know if you can see my screen so I know that I can continue. Yes, I can see your screen. Thank you. It's good to start having responses. <laughs> OK. Yes, so how, I can see oh, it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So how do I access Word, right? Um, Normally, from any, it will vary based on the type of computer, um, the version of your your Windows operating system, right? So, by Windows operating system, I mean um, every every lap every um, laptop or computer has what we call an operating system. That's an OS. So, what, what Microsoft and Ma um, Apple and all those guys have done is some years back. We only had command line. So command line is just something like this. Right. Let me show you. And that's how you could interact with the computer like this. So everything you wanted to do, you had mm. to write lines of okay. you had to write scripts. Yes. Somebody trying to say something. Okay, so some years ago, you had to write um, like lines of code or scripting to interact with the computer, right? So what, what Bill Gates did then was, I mean, everybody would not know how to cram and write all of these lines of code with a black screen like this. So why not create a friendly user interface that people can interact with? So what he then did was he created the operating system as far back as I think Windows 98. And that's how the old operating system was invented. So the operating system is this interface that you interact with when you log on to your system, you know, that desktop, that whole um, interface that you see, that user interface is what the operating system is. And then that allows you to say, oh, I want to open Word, oh, I want to open Excel, I want to open PowerPoint. So normally um, you see something like this. Let me show my desktop. My desktop is, clear i usually i usually clear my desktop so you see something like this you know when you log on to a system i'm using windows 10 so if i want to open microsoft word i can come here and just search for word okay my search is showing up on my other screen let me yeah okay you can just come to this icon and you search for word right so um can also do this in Microsoft. Then you see all of my apps arranged in alphabetical order. And then I can look for Word. Okay, it's, gosh, I'm used to finding it like this, yeah, Word. So if it's Excel you wanted to search for, you search for Excel. And if it's PowerPoint, you can search for PowerPoint, right? So that's how you access it. So let me start with Word. I guess. So when you open Word, this is the first thing you see, right? The first thing you see is when you want to create a new document, you just come to new and a blank document. Something else that Avana, um, that Microsoft Word does is it gives you various templates that you can start working off of. You know, like you can see like polish CV, 
cover letter, all of these things. If you if you just click on it, it has it creates that um, interface for you, and you can start working from there. But for today, we just start with a blank document, and we can explore the others later. Are we together? Am I too basic? Am I too slow? We are together, ma. Okay. Is that a question in the chat box? Okay. All right. I saw somebody's hand up. Is it from the previous time? Let me lower the hand. Okay. So now, in what cases do you think you would need to create a Word document? Like, when do you think you would need to create a Word document? Who can help us? Who can help us? Maybe when you are creating and you want to write a report or when you're trying to create the resume. Okay, thank you. Reports, resumes, any other person? Any other person? You can't see my screen. Is there any other person that can't see my screen? Can you see my screen? Can anybody see my screen? I can see it. Okay. No, you can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Okay. Okay. So um um Kike, maybe you could um um log like leave the meeting and come back to the meeting. Then you should be able to see it. Sometimes it acts that way because of the internet. <laughs> All right, so when you log on to Word, a couple of things you see, right? You have your ribbon. And when, when we say ribbon, that's the ribbon across. So like Bidemi has said, CVs, reports, sometimes you want to write letters, um, sometimes you want to write proposals. Basically, almost all kind of official documents are written in Microsoft Word. So this is your ribbon. Can you see my cursor? I'm moving it. Are we able to see the cursor moving? Are we able to see the cursor moving? Nobody's talking. Let me see. Sorry, guys, responding in chat. Okay. So the ribbon. This is the ribbon. And on the ribbon, you have home, insets, draw, design, layouts and a lot of other things. But most of the time, you'd do a lot of your work around home, around insets also. So let's start. What do we want to create? Let's assume that I want to create a... Um, sorry? Hello? Okay, I thought someone was talking to me. So from here now, some basic things about the ribbon. Sorry, one second. So some basic things about the ribbon, you have, first of all, you need to know what we call fonts. So these are fonts, right? Different font types. So you have organizations saying, oh, our, our company font size is Calibre. That means that that's the approved font, fonts for all the documents that the organization uses, right? Then sometimes you have um, some other companies using different ones. So if it's a very per company, then this is the font size, right? This is the font size. This determines how, how large your, your text is. So for example, if I type my name now, like this, right? I can highlight it, then, you know, so the current fonts, the current fonts for your text is what would show here, right? Is what will show here. So this is the current font, but then you can see as I over on the different font sizes, <clears throat> on the different fonts, you can see that it's changing, you know, so, you can pick what you want to use. A couple of 
Um, Century Gothic is a very good and um, formal font you can use for your documentations. Um, Calibre is also good. But again, it, it varies based on your, maybe your organization or the organization you're going to work for. They will usually have a standard font that they use for their documents. Then this is the font size. So this determines how large your text can appear. <coughs> Then this just brings it one step up or one step down. Let me uh, let me zoom in. I'm not sure you. Okay. So this brings it one step down, one step up, just simple like that. Then you can use this to determine if you want all of the text to appear as lowercase or uppercase. Or you can ask it to toggle the cases or capital each word first. Okay. Right. Other things that you can do here is you can also do your bold, italics, you know, underline like that. Then you can also cross out. We use cross, I use cross out a lot when I'm formatting documents. So maybe you are writing the reports, or maybe Somebody has written a report and has sent it to me to review and I'm looking at it and I feel this should not be there, but I don't want to delete it so that the person, other person knows what that I've, I've, I've um, taken this out, right? I can just, um, I can cross it out like this, you know? So so the person sees that, oh, this um, phone has crossed out this text. Okay, so let me take this out, take this out. Then, um what else can we do you can use this for um making making the text smaller or bigger you know the way you write your dates like 19th you know and you want the th to appear above let me come back to regular text regular font text is usually between 10 and 12. so if i say 12 this is this here you can see, and this brings it down. So that's what this two do for you. And this one are just effects that you can have on your text message, in your text. Then here is the highlighter. So you're reviewing a very long um, document and you need to highlight sections of the documents, right? So let me get some dummy text from the internet. You can use your highlighter. So this is dummy text, right, from the internet. So I'm reading this, and I want to, I want to, um, I want to lay emphasis on a particular part on the document. So I can kind of select. So I'm highlighting by clicking my mouse, like um, left click on your mouse. So when we say click, if someone is, if somebody is talking to you, and the person says click. That means left click, right? But if the person wants you to right click, the person will say right click. So any click that is click means left click. All right. So um, I'm really going very basic now because this is like beginner's class. So you know your normal mouse. If you're using an external mouse, it will look like this, right? Some of us, some of us may use a mouse on our laptop. So this is the regular click, which is on your left. And then you, when you want to right click, then you use the right one like this. Okay, so this is the highlighter. I'm reading this document. I want to call attention to a particular part of it. Then I can highlight. So I'm I'm just clicking my like I'm just clicking on my mouse and I'm dragging it, and then it highlights this section this way. Like this, you get okay. So that's how you highlight sections of a document. And there are different colors that you can use for it. Um, if you want to take it away, you select that same section of the document, you come back here and you say no color and everything goes away like that, right? Then this one is used to change the color, font color. So everything now is black. But let's assume we wanted to use another color for it. Just select the section of the document you want to use and then you can change the font to red 
or to whatever color you want to change it to, to blue, to green, to gray, you see. So all of this, um, the good thing about Microsoft is they've tried to maintain <clears throat> consist consistency across um, all of their applications. So if you open Microsoft Excel, you see the similar ribbon, the similar icons, the similar functions there, the same thing with PowerPoints, right? So it's not like, oh, when you open PowerPoint, you see a completely different environment. Now, I'm using the latest version of Office. So you're, if you're using maybe Office 2010 or Office 2013, you, the ribbon may appear a bit different, you know, but the principles are still the same, right? You still see a font somewhere, a font size somewhere. You still see the highlighter. It's just the UI, the user interface that may be a bit different. So don't say, ah, my own is not looking like that. It may not look like that, but it's okay. It's fine. All right. So um, then we have we have um this this thing is for bullet points. So say you want to make a list of 10 things, right? Then you can you can make your documents look tidy by keeping them in bullet points. And let me copy another. Or you want to talk about the subsection of something. So say I've, for example, I have I have two sections here now. I have this section. I have this section and I have this section, right? So I want to make them I can come, I can make this like number one. This is bullet point, these are numbers. So I can select something like this. Then I can come here. And do this. To create sections, it's to create like one section, another section. Then, if you don't want numbers, you can use bullet points instead. You can use numbers, and there are different options of bullets. Um, the bullets we have the bullet library that has different options that you can use for your documents, right? So, then you can see this one is a bit off. So what I can do is I can highlight it and use my ruler. Your ruler is what is this thing that you have here. It kind of helps you to put your document, your formatting where you want it to be. So like this, right? Okay, that's fine. Any questions so far? Does anyone have any questions? No, thank you. No questions. Okay. All right. Is it like someone will say, is it making sense? Is it is it meeting your expectations? Hello? Yes, it is. For me. Okay. Okay, all right. Um sorry, one second, please. I need to take this one. Hello, Tosin, are you here? Hello, Tosin. If you're trying to speak, your mic is on mute. Hello. Okay. I can't hear you if you're trying to speak. So that's what we use the... Um, bullet points for right then we now have the um the numbers okay i've explained the numbers then sometimes you want to kind of indent so when i say indent i mean like okay you have this then you have another subsection of this so um you want to put another set of bullet points so let me see let me put let me do this so you can see how it goes so there's a there's a heading, then there's another another subheading, then a subheading, another subheading. 
So that's what you use this, this for. It helps you to order your documents properly. Hello, Tosi, once you can hear me, let me know, please. Right, so let me select this. Then, so you see, I'm just using my tab key now. So it will, it will give me, then let's say I want to break it here again. You see, and I'm breaking it here again. So that's what this does for you, right? So you just, what I was, I highlighted this section and then I kind of, so it's now breaking it down into subsections like that by tabbing it. All right, then you have your, this is justify, right? Justify is a proper way of writing your documents and it just means that I want to spread it out end to end, right? So let me show you an example. This text, all of these texts are already in justify. But I can decide to write, align it. Can we see the difference? Then keep it in the center or put it on the left or justify it like that. So that's what all of this does. So you use this based on the type of documents you are writing. You know, sometimes when you want to write maybe letters, dates, you want to keep your dates on the right. So that's when you kind of use this one. So it just helps you to keep all of the text on the right side of the page. Then most of the time, we're either using the left or the justify. Then sometimes maybe you're writing a poem and you want to keep your text in the middle of your page, then you can use something like this. So that's what all of these guys are used for. Then this one is for your spacing. <clears throat> this one is for your spacing. So you can decide how far apart your text should be from each other. So that's what all of this is for, right? Okay. Then this is to highlight, this is also if a filler of the whole section that you have highlighted. It's kind of similar to the highlighter, but it's it's it fills out the entire section, not just the text. Let me show you the difference. If I use a highlighter on this, let's say I highlight it red or green, right? So it's a bit different from it. Can you see? It's only highlighting the text, but the filler is is like you're pouring water in a bucket. It's completely filling the entire space. All of the edges are filled out, not just the text itself. So that's the major difference between it. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> Hello, Tosin, can you hear me? <clears throat> so the instructor is Tosin, actually. I'm just um, standing in for her. Okay, all right, she says she needs five minutes. So let's continue. Um, what else is important here? There are a lot of things that you probably not use most of the time. This is your stamp, right? So you can decide to stamp a document. Um, let me see, sensitivity, unrestricted. I have... Uh, My, your screen is not very clear. I can't really see what you're doing. Which one? The ribbon? Y yes. Mm. Ribbon is small, but I'm not sure I can. I'm not sure I can zoom out. So that's the thing is, it's I'm coming. The zoom. I'm thinking is the network. So if your network is not very strong, the video quality will mm. video quality will be blurry. But if you have Microsoft this, this is... on your sorry, if you have Microsoft Outlook on your own system, just open it. I so watch. that when she calls the name of the ribbon, you can just look for it, sort of. Mm, because it's it's really it's small, and then I can't I can't zoom on that on that section. Like if I try to zoom, it's zooming only the content inside it. Do you see? So maybe yes. maybe um um. So let's let's do a quick. How how many of us have our how many of us have um, have Microsoft Word with us where we are now? I want us to start to try some of these. I things. have. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So can we open up? Let's download. 
Okay, let's do a quick classwork. To be okay. sure that I'm following. So what you're going to do is create a document. Then, um, give it the fonts, century Gothic. This may sound really basic, but honestly, this is where everyone everyone needs to start from, right? Because you have to know how to use all of these things. Font size 12. Um, what else? Right alignment. Um, um, Let's use some bullet points. Um, highlights, highlights, uh, highlight a few words yellow. Then I also want you to cross out, cross out a few words. All right, let's quickly do this. This kind of is some of everything I've been talking about since. Can we see the, um, let me zoom out once. Let's start, please. I'm giving us 10 minutes to do this. And when you finish, just, um, how will you give it to me now? Let me see. Maybe you can, let me see. Can you attach? You should be able to attach on the, on the chat. There's an attach icon on the chat. Just save it on your system, click on attach and put it in the chat. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Just 10 minutes, just to be sure that you are following. Then we continue from here. Are we good? Um, let me see who's here. We are the members of the chat. Um, We have Akin, Bidemi, Eunice, Anna, Joanne, Kike, Kimberly, Ungozi, um, Okonji. Oh, oh. I'm not sure what your first name is, but I see Okonji, Sheung, Panom, Peter, Titi. And yet today, are you with me? <laughs> These are all the people I have in the class. We will, are we together? Are we doing this? Can I see your hand up if you're on, if you're trying to do this? So I'm not telling you the text to write. You can write anything. You can decide to just write, you know, I don't know anything. My name is something, or you can pick dummy text from the internet. I just, Use some dummy text I found on the internet for this. So I'm here 10 minutes by 1020. We continue. Ma, are we meant to write all this that you jot down on your screen? No, you are not writing it. So, what I expect from you is something like this. Like, you write anything you want. So, I can say, my name is Fuin. 
on her GDB law, right? Just write some text. Then whatever text you have written, you now do all of this on it, right? You make it the font, make the font century gothic. You make it 12. You use the right alignments. No, not right. Um, left, actually. Lose left alignment, then give it bullet point. So bullet point, you can decide to do it like this. Just something like this. Then highlight a few words in yellow. Highlight a few words yellow and then cross out a few words. So all of these things I've said here, the things that I've shown us as we were talking. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So for you, how are we going to do this when we're watching this? Sorry, I have issues with the bullet points. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yes. Um, coming, um, sorry, um, BDME. Somebody had a question before you. I'm not sure who it was. Can you repeat the question? I was trying to look for my. How do you do all this when we're on teams, when we're watching this? Mm, so, are you are you using your laptop to join the call? Yes. So what you can do is you can minimize the Teams window. You know, like, for example, you you already know that okay, I'm supposed to create a word document. I'm supposed to write a few text in it then you can minimize the teams window do all of that then when you're done you 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 bring, come back to the teams window to see the next thing that you want to do then you you minimize it and do it do, do you understand does that work yeah thanks okay yeah bd me i'm with you i'm i'm having issues with the bullet points and also I'm joining the teams with my phone, but I'm using my laptop for the um, creation of documents. I don't know how to send it. Oh, mm. it's fine. It's fine. Once you're able to do it, then it's fine. I just want to be sure that you can do it and you don't have any problem with any of the items. Okay, ma'am. What about the bullet point? Okay, so let's assume that. Let me. Come back here. Let's assume that this is your text that you just wrote, right? Um, and I want to write a bullet point. So let's say my name is Fony. I am um, um I I like to eat to eat and I say bread, rice, dairy um what else beans right and i need to put this in bullet point so what you do is you come here before the bread press your enter key mm? then highlights this section you come up to these bullet points click on it you see 
But when you do that, it's only going to put the bullet point in front of the bread. But I want it to be in front of rice, curry, and others. So I come again before rice. I just press enter before Gary, I press enter before beans, I press enter. Yeah? Okay, ma, I understand now, thank you. Okay, okay, try it and let me know, please. Is there any other person that has any other questions? Um, um, Eunice, Anna, Joanne, Kike, how's it going? Are you are you able to try this? Do you have any questions? If you're trying to speak, I can't hear you because your mic is on mute. Let's see if anybody's chatting. If I call me Valentina, ma. My name is Valentina. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. Valentina, um, are you? Yeah. The thing is, I'm actually doing it, but I'm doing it with my phone, so it's a bit difficult for me. Oh, already yeah, I know how to do this. I know, yeah, I already know how to do this aspect. Uh, I think I'm good at it already. So okay. it's just me trying to go back to what I do before. Okay, okay. So you're good at like all these fonts, alignment, and everything. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, all right, that's fine. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Okay, is there another person still trying? I don't want to keep people wasting unnecessarily. That's why I'm just asking. Yes. Yes, ma. I'll write my name and and add bullet point to it. So what okay. is I should do? Is your font? You check your fonts that is century gothic. Check check the font size that is twelve. Okay. Are you there? Have you done those two? I'm coming. Okay. I'm coming out to highlight it. And yes, it's twelve. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Is it? Um, can you highlight a few words yellow? A few words yellow. Yes. I'm coming. My but um the only thing I write here is my name alone. I do not have any other thing. It's okay. So far you can do everything you need to do with your name alone. I couldn't okay. do that. I couldn't do the bullet points with my name. So that's why I added this one. Okay. Like you know, you use the bullet points when you're trying to create like a list or you're trying to have sections and subsections. Yes, so that's yes. why I just said I like to eat and I put bread, rice, and you know some other things there so that you can kind of relate to it. Okay. Um, okay. My I've I, I have I like my name and I've changed it to, to yellow. Okay. All right, yes. that's good. Okay, okay, so I think we're fine. The, were you were we able to cross out? Um were we so, able to cross out? Yes, my Right. So, okay, someone else was trying to talk. Can we continue? Can I go ahead? Can I go ahead? You know, yes, cross, yes. could you clarify on the cross out as well? Didn't say that. Sorry, John, you said the cross out. Yes. yes. Where is the cross out? Could you okay, let me show you. So, once you highlight a yes, highlighting word. Too. It's here, it's right here after the um, underline. This is it here. Are we? Okay, okay. all right. So usually when we usually use the cross out sometimes when you are reviewing your documents, right? I, I had explained this previously and you don't, you don't want to delete it because you want the other person to know that oh this is um this was here before but i think we should take it out so you can use the cross out for that 
Now, let me open a real document and let's just do some things with it. So this is just a sample document I found online. So one of the things you can do is you can use this um, headings title. So when you're creating a document, the um, proper way to do it is to use your headings, your title here. It kind of gives consistency in your document. So for example, <clears throat> this just looks like a regular text, but this should be the title. So I come here and I click on title, right? So this is the title of my document. Then this is a heading. Let's say, let's assume that this is a heading. This um, whole section is a heading. So I can come here, I can pick heading one for it, right? Then let's say this is a subheading under this heading. Action required in the subheading. So I come here, I can pick heading two. Oh, where is heading two? Come on. Uh, let me see. I don't have an heading two here. Ma, I can't really see what you're doing. Yes. So can you see where I am? Not really, ma. Wow. So I'm in styles. Let me see. So when you're trying to style, st the styling section of your document helps your document to be consistent. One of the things that makes a professional document is the consistency of the styling of your documents. It's very important. So when we say styling, we're talking of things like your fonts, your font size, you're not using century gothic somewhere and using times new roman somewhere and using um, franklin logic and another place right if you're using century gothic the whole of your documents is century century gothic then when you have headers when, when you have them um, headings and subheadings within your documents whoever is reading it should be able to understand that okay this part is a heading and this one is a subheading right so that's what i'm trying to do here so ideally you have like title, which you use for the top of your document like this. Then you will have your heading one, which you can use for a heading. For example, if I say I'm writing an essay about myself, and then I say use say my title, the title is essay about for me, right? So I use title about on that. Then I can say my personal life, right? My personal life can be heading one. And then under my personal life, I now have school i have family those should be like adding to let me let me see if i can show you what i'm trying to see so this document is not open let me come back here so let me take all of this out right so i want to write an essay i'm trying to explain what you use this styling section for so let me remove all of this and come back to regular text. Um, okay, so let's say I want to write an essay about myself. I say for me, well, I did it. Bear with me. I'm trying to drive at something from your large Bello's life, right? Then I say personal life. And I say Mark, um, is there a way you can zoom a little bit so that I can yes, see what you are writing? Zoom. Yeah, I can zoom on the text. Is it better? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I say family. I say school. I say then I come and say um career. Then I say um early career. Then I say mid career. Then I say, what else is about me? Um, oh, I don't know. So let's start with this anyway. So for this now, when you want to style your document properly, this is my title. So I come here, do I have a title here? I pick title, right? So you see when I select title, it automatically gives it a font, a font size and everything, right? For me, then I come here and say personal life. Personal life should be heading one. Then I come here and say family. Family will be heading two. Because family is a subset of personal life. 
my school is also adding two, right? Then my career will be adding what? Adding one, right? And then early career will be adding two, mid career will be adding two. Now, another thing you can do is to make it look better, you can format this. Um, I can modify it, my adding to say, okay, I want my adding to include numbers. So it's a bit small, but you can play around with it on your own. So, um, where is that place now? Let me see. I want it to include numbers. So, one size, one size, one size. Da, da, da. Mm, come on. I need this document formats, numbering. So, what this does is it gives it numbers. So, if I zoom out for one second, you can see. So when anybody reading this document can see that this is my title, I can put this as center alignment, right? This is personal life. So this is a heading, this is a subheading. So what I can do again to make it look good is I can make this subheading like 1.1, 1 .1, like this. But instead of doing that here, I'll come here to edit my style of my heading to modify. And put my numbering as or define new number. So we get. So anyone reading this can see that, okay, this is 1.1 and this should be 1.2. Uh, this should be 1.2. I just need to adjust it properly. But you get the picture. And then this one should be, two, this one should be 2.1 and this one should be 2.2. That's how it should be. And then inside all of this, I can now write all my text. There. And make this, all this text normal. But normally, if you're working, I mean, every organization already has all of this, um, all of this formatting and setting done. So usually if you open a document that is in your organization, all of this formatting should have already been done for you. But you should just know that you, you should pick title, you should pick heading one, and all your subheadings should be like heading two. If you have another subheading, heading two. If I have another subheading inside this family, for example, if I have, say, children, this one should not be what adding three like this. Do we get? Okay, it's a bit maybe a bit complex, but this is how to properly format a document. Because when this document goes into 50 and 60 pages, you are able to see whoever is reading it can see the um how it how it flows and can understand it and can even minimize sections. Can you see, for example, I don't want to read about the children's section, I can minimize it. But if I didn't put the for proper formatting, you won't be able to minimize sections to allow people to read it properly. Like that. All of that, all of this is possible because I have done the proper formatting. Okay, so can we continue? Let me come back to this dummy document. Are we together? Yes, ma. Yes, oh, ma. Okay. Another another part of the um word is review. Another interesting part of Microsoft's word that a lot of people don't use and don't know about is the review section. The review section helps you to put comments against your documents and also helps you to track your changes and also have to track your changes sorry one second i just need to okay 
so the review section helps you to track your helps you to track changes helps you to add comments to your documents now what do i mean for example let me just check if somebody okay for example um i'm reviewing these documents now you know i i spoke about crossing out text so this all this text now i want to cross it out i come here and i click cross out like that but if um let me say be me if you sent me a document to review and I cross it out like this and send it back to you and you open it, what, what, what would you think? That it's not correct. But will you know why it's not correct? No, or will you know what I hear or what I expect? You know? So that's where comments come in. So if you come to review and you come to comments, what you can then, what I can then do is I can do this and I can add the comments and say, please, um, I think this is not needed, right? Or I can say whatever, rephrase it, take it out, include more content in it. I can, I can say anything I want to say on here. And then what happens is when you get, if I save this document and send it to you, when you get it and you open it, you just see my comments here. And you see, oh, for it says that this section is not needed, then you can delete it. Right. So when it comes to you, you can then reply and say, okay, noted. Section deleted. And then you can delete it. Like that. Any questions? No. Um, <clears throat> okay, thank you, Valentina. I want to be sure people are here. Um, who else is on the call? Um, Aki, or maybe Victor. Victor, are you here? Can you hear me? Um, Ife? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay. Is this what you expect? Yes, I'm here. I'm okay, here. okay. All right. Is it helpful? Ideally, yes, before the very, class, I would like to it's helpful. Okay. Ideally, before the class, I would like to ask what your expectations are. So I'm sure I'm meeting them, but I just jumped right into it because we were already late and I was so sorry for keeping you waiting for so long. So I just kind of started. But I just need to know if it's if it's kind of helpful, if you're learning new things. I know some of us may be familiar with Word, but I'm just trying to pick out some areas that I think a lot of people don't use and are kind of very useful for me, like in my in my everyday life. Okay. All right. So I can continue. Right. So this this is how, what you use comments for. Now, another another level is tracking changes. Right. Tracking changes is really good, and some people find it complex, but with time you get used to it. How do you track changes? So I can come to this document and say track changes. Track changes. Now, what will happen is when Bidemi sees my comment and says, okay, noted, and deletes it. You know, before we didn't see this red line here. Let me zoom out a bit. Before we didn't see this red line here. Now it's here. And it's here because I'm saying track my changes. So what track changes does is every single change that is being made on the document is tracked, exactly what it means. So if you delete anything, normally, if you don't track the changes and you delete, nobody will know that you have deleted something. But by tracking the changes, it will show you that something has happened here. So I can click on this now. Can you see? I can see, I can see the comments that for you said this wasn't needed anymore. Let me over again. The comment should still be here. I can see the comment there. I can see what Bini, what Bidemi responded and I can see that the section was taken out. So that's how track changes work. Then you can then, <clears throat> you can use this once to go to the next comments. If you're looking through, if you're reviewing a document of 50 pages, you can't be scrolling, 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 you're not doing Just want to look at what is next. So you just say next comments. 
it will just take you the next, it will take you the next, it will just be taking you to the comments and you can treat only those comments alone. Then after everything, you can decide to accept. So when you see the changes that have been tracked, you can say, okay, accept the changes. Accept and move to next. So when you accept it, it's... Accept and move to next. There aren't any comments or track changes in your documents again, like you have looked through everything. So accepting a change will now remove the tracking to say, okay, somebody has said this is fine. It's just take it out completely and it will look as if nothing happened there. So that's how track changes work. You can also reject a change. If you reject a change, it will just undo it. So let me let's look at how that works. So I can come here, highlight this. I can say rejects. Uh, reject and move to next. So you see. So what it then does is it's that deletion that Bidemi has done, it undid it, but still left the text crossed out. Because I I didn't I didn't say it should, it should track the changes before I crossed out the text. Are we? Is there any parts that you like me to repeat? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, which one? Um, track changes. I'm trying to replicate what you are doing on my own word. Okay. So, but uh, I couldn't find that icon where I could track changes. Okay, so let's 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 start again. If you come to review, you know you on your ribbon you have home insets, draw, design, layout, references, mailing, review. So if you come to review, I think I'm fine. Okay, yeah, you have seen it. Okay, okay, that's great. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Uh, let me check the charts. Do we want to try it? Just try. Do we want to try this out? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. In fact, the importance of this uh, um, teaching is that I had an encounter with uh, a service level agreement, a contract, and the lawyer made a lot of changes, but was able to put in some comments by the side. I just told them to print it out so that I can do it manually. <laughs> but, I could have even track, I mean, adjusted on my system and make her know where the changes are. Honestly, it, 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 it's, it's eye opening. I really I'm appreciate sorry. it. I'm so delighted to hear this. Sorry, I can't see who is talking. I've been trying to look for you, your name as you were speaking, but I can't, I can't seem to find it. Okay, I, I think I, I'm Peter. Peter, PC. okay. Yes. Okay, okay, Peter Clay. Uh, it's showing that you're not in our meeting again. Okay, okay, it's fine. Thank you so much. So, you see, these are the kind of things you know, when people say Microsoft Word, they just say, Oh, I know Word, but you know, there's some of the things that we don't know, and this is one of it. And the funny thing was, I learned this from one of my bosses who, who um, was the former general manager of Microsoft. So he was very, he's very good with words. So when someone starts editing document, when I just started my career, I'll just stay beside him. I'll be watching him. I was like, ah, so this one is here again. This one is here again. Wow. You know, so, so just so many, so many tips and tricks that we may not be aware of. That is really, really helpful. So, yeah, so that's one of the, so that's how you use the comments, the track changes and, and the reject changes too. So that's really most of what, um, what is really this, um, useful on this tab, then review is review would spell check, will check your grammar, will check your vocabulary, you know, and give you a score. I'm not sure if this is available in older versions of Word, but 
it's available in this new version. So you check all your spellings that they are fine, all your grammar. See, since two of my grammars are not correct, maybe because of this. Okay, then something else we need to know is um, when, when you type and you misspell, let me stop tracking changes. Uh, so when you want to stop tracking change, just come to uncheck the track changes. Uh, wait. Uh, stops yeah okay so stop tracking changes we'll close this now it helps what what is very good because it helps you with spelling with grammar and microsoft keeps improving on it. it keeps getting more intelligent as you go along so for example if i do this now oh i'll start at the end of this document let me come here you can see it's automatically give you this red line. So the meaning of this red line is that your spelling is not correct, right? You need to check your spelling. So you can right click on it. It will give you various options of what it thinks that you're trying to write. And then you can just pick the one that is correct. What also gives you synonyms? I use this a lot, especially my emails. Because sometimes I find I'm using the same word twice. Oh, it was very, I, I was, thank it was nice meeting you. Um, the experience was fantastic and fantastic. I said, no, I cannot be using fantastic two times in one paragraph. What else can I say? I just, you just right click on that word and you come to synonyms, uni, you see, then it gives you other, other ones that you can use that kind of, that sounds, that will still give you the same context of what you're trying to write. So I use this a lot. So synonyms, I use synonyms and I use them um, and the spell checking is really great because when I'm typing very fast, I don't have to like, when, once I'm done, type in, then I can come back and just quickly right click and spell check. Sometimes I feel it makes us lazy, <laughs> but it's good. It helps us to write faster. <coughs> so let me check what else I've not covered. One second. Um, spoken about the ribbon. Then we have headers and footers. You have this here because I put a, a sensitivity stamp on it. So let me take it out. We have your header. All most official documents, you need to put, you need to have your, um, your maybe your logo or something in the header section of your documents, right? So how did I get into the header section? Double click on it, that's the header. Then you can add an image. So if you have your company logo, maybe somewhere on your system, you can add it here. So I can say pictures. Then let me come here. I can just pick this one. Then, of course, you can resize. Whenever I want to resize images, please don't resize them from the side. It spoils the orientation of the images. Always resize them from the corners, like this. Right? Are we together? When you do that, it maintains the the um, length and the length, yes, the length and the breadth of the image, and just kind of minimizes it. That's just general. Um, comments for us. So you can now put your image here. I want it to be on the left like that. This is where your left alignment comes in now. So let's say this image of your, this is the logo of your company, Boeing and Sons Limited. I'll put it here. You see? So rather than putting it inside the documents, this kind of things should be on your header. So maybe when you want to do your letter head, all those your address, all those things should be here, not inside the documents um then you have your footer so the footer of your doc your all your documents should be numbered right it's very wrong to write a formal document that is not numbered and you don't know the importance of numbering until somebody is trying to tell you go to page 15 of the documents i made a comment there then you now look at your document your document does not have number you start saying how do i know where page 15 is right so always insert numbers in your footer so when you double click on the lower part of your document the footer section jumps up jumps out at you then you can uh, <clears throat> you can include your footer here so microsoft even has um it has created all these fancy things for us that we can use so you don't have to bother yourself too much so for example you want to you want um, your number to be in the middle it's there already for you you don't like this one 
you want um you want something else there right maybe you want to put the name of your company here so phone and sons phone and sons you now want to say service let me use uh, Peter's suggestion service level agreement and here in this place he wants to say something else like i want to put my number here let me see one so it gives you the options or you don't like this one you want something else you can pick whatever you want from here are we together you, i'm sorry do you right click to get to the footer yes to get I'm to double, the options I'm, to get I'm, to the different designs so I'm double clicking on the lower part of the page. Once you double click and the footer section jumps up, jumps, the footer section becomes active. It automatically brings this up for you. So let me come out. So double click on this, on the lower part of the document. It will bring out this whole section for you. Then you just click the lower arrow. Okay, 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 I've yes. seen it. Yes. Thank you. And Yes, and the other parts too, you can see that there are very nice designs there. Here, you can, that you can use too for your header. You know, and you can, if you don't want this one, you can, you can remove it. You can pick another one. So that's about headers and footers. Any questions on header and footers? Oh, I can see Ngozi has hand up. Yes, Ngozi. Yes, I've been, I'm trying to come out of um, the track changes and it's still, it's still highlighted. I don't know what to do. Is there a toggle key? Oh, okay, track changes. Um, yeah. Ideally, if you click on it again, yeah, it's like, it toggles, right? So when you click on track, I clicked on it now, it's tracking. If I click on it again, it will stop tracking. That's that's all. It's still showing me the red, the red, uh, it still has the red lines there. Oh, it will still have the red lines because you were, what, what, uh, like my own still has this because at the time when I did this, I had asked it to track changes. Do you understand? So uh, when I did this one, it was tracking changes. Then I toggled off and I did, I moved my S to stop tracking the changes. Um, Queen, can I? Oh, Queen. Okay, Hello, can you hear me? MDR. Yeah, so can you go to the accept button where you will see the accept button for you? So you can just click on it and you see the option for you to accept all okay. and then stop tracking. Where is the accept button? Yes, it's so, beside. Yes, yeah, can you just watch for instance a screen? It's very close to um. It's here beside the after track changes. You have all of these, then you have accept. Okay. Then if you click so on you the can, lower so you can arrow, say yes, and then if you want to stop the tracking, you can say accept the changes and stop tracking. Oh, okay. So that removes that removes all the previous. It, that accepts all the previous changes and stops tracking it. So you won't see the red lines again. But if you just toggle, like I, what I said before, you still see the red lines. But if you want to see the red lines again, you want to accept all the changes, then you accept all the changes and stop tracking. The same thing to reject. If you don't want all of the changes, you can reject all the changes and stop tracking. So if you reject it, it doesn't action any of those changes that have been done before. Does it help? Okay. Yeah, I think it does. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I think we've come to the end of today's section. Just checking I covered everything we wanted to talk about for today. Um, our take home, what we need to do, let me come back to my document here. 
delete. Can I take it out? Our take home assignments will be to cover. Uh, let's try out everything that we've learned today, right? That's what we need to do just to be sure that we can do it and it sticks. So we'll start from. So for you, know, are we going to get the video? So. Yes, this session is actually recorded. So what will happen after this class is we would upload it to our YouTube channel and then you can watch it there. Okay. Yes, you can watch it there. Um, so take home. Let me put it homework. Number one, who can help us? What did we start our class with? Anyone? Some people in this class have not heard their voices. So are we here? Um, Titi Layo, Yetunde. I hope we're fine. We started with checking for font yes, and font size. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. We started with fonts. So, I'm going to create a document. Right. We just want to go over everything that we have learned as homework. In the document, we will want. I'm going to use. We'll try. Let's try out the um, head, the styling. Let me just call it styling. When I say styling, what do I mean? I mean, you pick a font, try out the font size, try out header, try to use. Um, Let's use title and headings. Let's use title. Try to use the headings. When I say title and headings, I mean this piece. You know, the way I explained it here. Try to use title, try to use headings. Um, what else around, around styling? Then the second thing, try to highlight some sections. Highlights, highlight, cross out. Um, highlights, cross out. What else? Yeah, so I think that should be fine for fonts, for styling. Then, what else did we talk about? Also, try to have some some lists like bullet points, maybe bullet points or numbers, just to refresh your memory on that section. Oh. Okay. What else? After that, what do we talk about? Who wants to help us? Comments, reviews. Yeah. Do some reviews on your documents. Put comments. Track your changes. Track your changes. Um, of course, track and stop tracking. Put the comments. Um, I think that should be fine. Then, I think that's major. Let me double check. Then, then of course, in your styling, 